Let's continue. The nurse calls you up. Let's say on post-operative day five, okay? And the nurse says to you, doctor, the dressing of this patient is soaked with serosanguine, not blood, just serous fluid, soaked. I don't mean the dressing's a little bit wet. I mean it's soaked. Guys, that is not something where you say, oh, well, let's put another dressing on. That patient has a dehiscence, meaning that fluid is coming out from their belly. The wound is separating. The stitches are separating. The treatment of a dehiscence, the treatment of a dehiscence is you take that patient to surgery. Why? First of all, by definition, when someone has a dehiscence, do they have an open abdomen? Will they have peritonitis? Oh, yes. So you got to do something. And if you don't do anything, that dehiscence, when the patient coughs, will turn into an evisceration. And what evisceration means is when all of the intestines come out of the belly. And I don't know if you've ever seen an evisceration, but if you do, you will never forget it. Why? Psychologically, guys, one of the most disturbing things is as a human to see your intestines outside your body. Why do I say that? Because producers of movies, uh, whether they be war movies or they do those Friday the 13th or um, uh, uh, the movie Saw, you know, those kind of things, they know this. And they will sometimes have scenes where someone's intestines are outside their body. I'll give you an example. Before your time, there was a movie called Alien, the original movie Alien. And it was about a, people in a spaceship and there was a guy there that was infected with an alien. And, and in the movie, this alien tore out of this guy's belly with his intestines. And in those days, it was the first time where they had special effects that were pretty good. And guys, when that happened, and you're all used to it now with the movies nowadays, but when it happened years ago in the theaters, there were people who got sick and people who couldn't watch it. When you see a patient with a dehiscence and then an evisceration, they are lying there. They are lying there petrified. The patient is petrified. The nurse is petrified. Everyone is petrified because it is a really gross thing. Guys, you take the patient to surgery straight away. Now I want to add something. This is not on the test. This is for life. In a situation like that, the nurse will call you and they may be very, very distraught and they will call you up and they might say this to you. Doctor, I need you. Guys, if you are ever in a situation where the nurse says, I need you, you don't ask questions, you say, I'll be right there. Please remember this. Do not say, well, what's going on? When a nurse, when a nurse says that, I need you, you go to the hospital. So remember, if you have a dehiscence, which means a lot of fluid coming out of the belly on the dressing. You take that patient to surgery to avoid an evisceration, to avoid an evisceration. All right, let's continue. We are now going to talk about fistulas. Fistulas. Now a fistula is a communication between the gut 
and the outside world, meaning the nurse will call you up or the patient may call you up if the patient's at home after an operation and say, doctor, there is green stuff or fecal matter coming out of my wound. That's a fistula. You might call that an enterocutaneous fistula, an enterocutaneous fistula. Is that good? No, it's not. Surgeons hate this, but it happens. The only thing you need to know for the test and life is there are two types of fistulas controlled and uncontrolled. Let me explain the difference between controlled and uncontrolled. If you have a controlled fistula, that means that the patient looks basically pretty good, meaning they don't have a fever, they don't have a white count, they don't have significant pain, their belly is basically benign, but they do have, coming through the wound or a drain site, green stuff or feces. So it's a controlled fistula. It's coming from the inside world directly to the outside world. Generally speaking, and that's all you have to know for the test in life, the treatment of a controlled fistula is making the patient bowel rest, which means NPO, generally speaking, and giving total parenteral nutrition, meaning you will give them hyperalimentation via the vein, either through a pick line or a subclavian or an internal jugular. Now I'm gonna go back for a second. I just wanna remind you in general, in general, in general, if you have to give nutritional support and you have to choose between enteral and parenteral, always choose enteral. But in this situation where you want bowel rest, when you want a bowel rest, you choose parenteral by the vein. And what will happen is usually, usually, the fistula will close. Will it close in a day? No. Will it close in a five days or a week? No. It usually takes several weeks. And guys, it's very, very frustrating. Again, I just want to tell you, you have to let this heal on its own. And the patient will always say to you, well, doctor, why can't you fix it? And you have to say, well, I can't fix it. And they'll say to you, well, if you can't fix it, can you get someone else who can fix it? And you have to explain to them that if you go in and try to fix it, it won't work. And it's very frustrating for the, the when I have had patients who have had fistulas, controlled fistulas, oh, it is one of the most frustrating thing to all surgeons, all doctors. Oh, it's very frustrating. Because when you talk about having to be patient, you're not talking about a few days, you're talking weeks. So again, a control, a patient looks basically okay, and you have to treat with bowel rest and total parental nutrition. The other type of fistula is called an uncontrolled fistula uncontrolled fistula. And what that means is the enteral components, the green and the feces, instead of just coming out to the outside world, is also going into their belly. Is that good or bad? Terrible. That patient, the nurse will call a doctor, the patient looks like they're dying. They'll have a fever, they'll have a white count, they'll have an acute abdomen, they will be sick. And the, that obviously is you have to operate. 
straight away. You got to operate because the patient will die from sepsis. So that's an uncontrolled fistula. Uncontrolled fistulas, uncontrolled fistulas are easy to treat in the sense that you know what to do. You got to operate. It's the controlled fistulas, which is very, very frustrating. It will close in time, but you got to be patient. 